Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Time to discuss further into the discovery project, uh, which is on rotating on a slant and go over question two. Uh, basically, in my last video went over question one, and I also went over discovery project. This one here, and again, discovery project. To recap, is basically at the end of each chapter in my calculus book, it has a pretty interesting math project to solve. And it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting and, and more advanced than usual. So in this case, we're going to be rotating a curve about a slanted line like this. So we rotate about this, and in this way, try to find the region of the area, surface area, or volumes, as opposed to rotating about a vertical or, I mean, a horizontal or a vertical axis, such as the x and y axis, which I've covered in my earlier videos. And in question one of my last video, I basically uh, showed that the area of this region is equal to this um, this integral right here. I'm not going to go over it right now. Just so make sure to watch my earlier video, which I went over this in more in detail. And now the question I'm going to go over is this question two, which states find the area of the region shown in the figure below. So this area we'll call this a like that. So, and this area, this is exactly the same thing as what I derived, but for a general um, general shape under, uh, yeah, for a general region uh, below this curve and above this uh, slanted line. So when we look at this one here, we could basically, well, the solution to this is just use question one's answer, solution from Q1, so just for the question one, we know that this area is going to be equal to, well, let's just go look at this, so it's one divided by one plus m squared, write that down, one over one plus m squared integral, it's gonna be integral from p to q, and this is fx minus uh, mx minus b. This is fx minus mx minus b, and then times it by one plus m f prime of x dx. One plus m f prime of x dx like that. So now we just need to find these values and plug them in. So for this specific example, fx right here is x plus sine x. So we'll write that down, fx is equal to x plus sine of x. And then the derivative, so we know this part, the derivative is gonna be f prime of x. This just equals to, well, derivative of x is one plus derivative of sine is cosine x, so just recall that it is. And, and you can see the proof below in my video link below on why it's cos of x. So we have this. And now, what we need to do is find the rest, so m, M is basically, if we recall, this curve, um, this line, this slant line is y equals mx plus b. In this case, it's it's y equals uh, uh, x minus two. So this equals two in generally a general line mx plus b, where in this case our m is going to be equal to the slope, which is just one, and b in this case is just equal to negative two. So that's what b is, and then the next one p and q. Those are the uh, intervals we're going from, so that's P, and this is up to Q. And in this case, uh, our P is basically zero right here, and that's P, and then this Q goes all the way down. Here, this is two pi, that's two pi and two pi. This is equal to, well, uh, Q. All right, Q equals to two pi. So we got our Q, our P, and then the next one we need to get, well, yeah, that's all we need. We have our m, m is one, so we just plug this all in. So a is equal to one over one plus m is just one squared, integral from zero to two pi. That's our two pi, which is our q of f of x, which is going to be x plus sine of x minus m, which is one times by x minus b, which is, um, so b is negative two, so negative of negative two, we'll just put a plus two. And then this part here, we have one plus, and then m is one, so one plus one times f prime of x, which is just gonna be one plus cosine of x. 
dx <coughs> like that. So simplifying this is just 1 over 2 integral from 0 to 2 pi. This x is cancel, so we're left with sine x and then plus 2. Now this part, these add up to 2, so we have cos x plus 2 dx. So we have an integral like this, and uh, we could just foil this out. So I'll just foil this out, the integrand by itself, just to make it easier to do the integral. So when we foil this, we multiply this by this, then this by this, then this by this. And you can learn more about the foil method, just basic algebra in my early videos. I went over that as well, I'll put that in the video link below. So sine x times cos x, we have sine x cos x. And then we have sine x times 2, plus 2 sine x. And then we have plus 2 times cos x, which is right here, 2 times cos x. And then plus 2 times 2, which is 4. So we have all this. This equals 2. Let's just simplify it further. Equals to sine x cos x. And just factor out this 2 and all across this whole thing. So we have. 2 sine x plus cos x plus 2. So just that, leave it like that. So we have two parts of this integral. So now we could write this whole integral as area is equal to 1 half times 0 to 2 pi of, now we just break it up. So we have this first one sine x cos x dx plus, now we have a 1 half, but there's a 2 here. The twos just cancel, so I'll just remove this one half. So integral from zero to two pi of this full one here. And the reason I'm doing this one because we can solve this integral of each part pretty easily. This one we'll just have to do some substitution. So dx, and again the two cancels with this one half. So we have all this. And now this first integral, I'll call it one. This one will be basically I'll call it two. So this is our one. So what we have is for one, um, this one half of sine zero two pi sine x cos x dx. Well, in this case, what we could do is use substitution because we have a co because the derivative of uh, co of sine x is cos of x. So whenever we have a derivative is the same as another variable inside, we can cancel that out. Use subs. Substitution. So in this case, let uh, we'll just let u equals to sine of x, and then in this case, du is equal to cos x, and then dx. Yeah, and as you could see right here, this whole du we just cancel this entire thing out, and now the only thing that changes is the very is the interval. So at right here at u is equal to, I mean at, at x is equal to 0, we have, we have u is equal to sine of 0, which, well this just equals to, to 0. So if you recall the graph for sine of x, x, y, sine of x is just something like this. Let me just draw it like that. This is from 0 to 2 pi, this is sine of x. So this is up to 2 pi, and it keeps going on. This is 2 pi, and again, the value is 0. So we have 0, and then at, yeah, so u equals to 0, and then at um, x equals to 2 pi. This is interesting. We also have u is equal to sine of 2 pi, which, as according to this graph, is also equal to 0. So the area has to be 0, in fact. Well, yeah, so now what we have is basically 1 half of u to pi sine x cos of x dx is equal to well one half integral from zero to zero of sine of x is u and the du. So this is just zero. You don't even need to solve it because interval is there's no area here. So there's no area and again in my properties of integrals videos, my earlier videos, I show when it's integral from the same variable you're gonna <coughs> be evaluating well there's pretty much no area. So it's zero yeah, so this whole thing is equal to zero. So zero. So we just look at this whole second part only. So, 
And again, the reason for this is if you if you were to graph it out, it's going to be symmetric because it's a sign. I mean, it's uh, it goes up and down like a sine curve, so they just cancel areas. It's a net area. So the area is going to be equal to just the, the right side, which is zero to pi of sine x cos x plus two. So this is sine of x plus cos of x plus two dx. And now we could just evaluate this integral, just solve it so the integral of sine of x is equal to cos of x, uh, negative cos of x actually, because the derivative of cos of x is negative sine of x, you put a negative there. Then derivative of uh, I mean, integral of cos of x is just sine of x. And then plus 2x, like that. 0, 2 pi. This equals 2, and you plug this inside, cos 2 pi plus sine 2 pi, and then we have, plus this is going to be plugging in 4 pi, 2 times 2 pi, this is 4 pi, subtracted by now, you know, subtracted by cos 0 plus sine 0, and then plus 2 times 0 is just 0. So now the only thing we need to do is find these cosine 2 pi and this, this because this one sine is 0, we already showed is 0, sine 2 pi is 0. So this last part here, recall the curve for x, y, for um, a cosine curve, y equals cosine of x, looks something like this, so where this value is at 1. That's at 0 here, so it's 1, and then this is up to 2 pi, and it's symmetric. I'm just, it just periodic keeps going back and forth, etc. And this value is all the way across at 1. So at 2 pi it's 1, and at 0 it's 1. So this equals to 1, because this 2 pi is 1. So what we get is area is equal to, so now we have negative times, uh, negative 1, because there's a negative in front, plus 0, so we just plus 4y minus, now we just have a 1 right here. Actually, whoops, no, not a 1. Uh, there is this a negative sign here, so we forgot one thing. Put the negative there. So we have a negative 1, and then plus, uh, the rest is just 0. So we have this, which just equals 2. Well, negative 1 plus 4 pi, this is going to be plus 1. The 1's just cancel out. So we have areas equal to 4 pi, which is nice uh, and simple. You can plug this into the calculator and you get whatever value it is, which is about 3.14 times that, so it's about 12, 13-ish. So yeah, that's the answer, and that's pretty much all for today. Hopefully you uh, yeah, followed along. It's a pretty interesting example on, on uh, solving the area when it's on a slant like that. And in the next video, I'll go over some more questions on this discovery project, so stay tuned for that. And also, make sure to watch the first video. Very interesting on how to use uh, trigonometry uh, to basically shift this, shift the x-axis to the u, etc. And it was all for today. If you learned, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.